You know, I have been doing this work for many years. <coughs> and in fact, when people ask how did we decide on 2025 as being the year when we must reach leadership parity, to tell you the truth, it has a lot to do with the fact that I know I can, or I think I can live to 2025. <laughs> But it would be very unusual for me to be able to live another 64 years, which is the current trajectory that we're on in order to reach leadership parity. And the other thing that I know is that I'm just one person and that it's incredibly important if we're going to really help women and enable and propel and, and inspire them and, 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 and all the things that we want to do with Take the Lead, that there have to be many more people than me who are doing this work. And so I'm, I'm beside myself with joy to tell you that we have just done our first Train the Trainer. And Lex is in charge of, of uh, organizing it all. She's started out as a volunteer blogger for Take the Lead and then she became a strategist and she's slowly getting sort of uh, drawn in to doing <laughs> even more. And, and, and Emily, just had, uh, we just had the pleasure of, of having Emily in our first group of trainees. Mm -hmm. And so I ask them to be here and share with you tonight why it's important to them. Obviously, they're a much different generation than, than, than I am and, and, and even Amy, who's a much younger generation than I am. So um, Lex, would you yeah. start? And Sure, so I think I'm gonna, can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Okay, good. So um, again, Gloria gave me an introduction a little bit, thank you. Um, I'm a strategist with Take the Lead. I'm a writer and an editor in the systems thinking community. And um, I just wanna say this is an honor, this is exciting. I'm thrilled to be here with you guys and thrilled to be here with Gloria. I read her book two or three years ago and it knocked me over. Um, so that was in a good way. I say that when it's a good thing. Um, <laughs> it just felt like such wonderful truth telling. It was very fierce, it was very warm, it was very courageous, and it said the things that needed to be said. Um, so anyway, that's what drew me to the work. And as uh, Gloria shared, I've been doing a bunch of different things, but most recently working with her directly to create our Train the Trainer program, which um, Emily will speak to in just a moment. Um, just a little bit about what we've been doing. This past spring, we completed that first Train the Trainer program. We trained 10 women. Uh, age 20s to 60s, uh, a diverse uh, intergenerational group, of course. Um, some are independent coaches and trainers with deep experience. Some are new and fierce and fabulous. Um, all of them are capable of taking Gloria's work and the core curriculum that we have, uh, nine practical women's leadership power tools to advance your career, which Gloria has rolled out for many years to many people. All of them are capable and excited to take out this, um, to roll out this work in the fall. So their first workshops will be in the fall. So um, that's enough for me. Oh, one more quick thing. Um, what drew me to the Power Tools work, um, I just wanted to share this with you all, this idea of intergenerational movement building that so many of you, Gloria of course, and so many of you have worked so hard on the front lines of the women's movement. And for whatever reason, that's my heart connection. It's like that is knowledge that should not be lost. Maybe it's the editor in me, but it's like that needs to find its readers. It needs to find its uh, collaborators. And so um, that's what energizes me about this work. Um, I want to introduce Emily De La Cruz, who is a branding and communications uh, specialist. Um, she speaks nationally. Um, she already has a fabulous um, business of her own. And now she is one of our first Take the Lead trainers. Mm -hmm. So in talking about taking the lead and why it's important, right, we need to think about not only the women who are going to get into the C-suite, right, we need to think about those collegiate women, we need to think about those millennial women, the women that may never get the chance to get into the C-suite because they may fall out of the career trajectory at any point in time, right, they may have families and never re-enter the workforce, they may find other aspirations, they, you know, they may go on to do other things, or they may just be stuck. Right? So for me, being able to be a trainer means being able to bring all those women along with me. Although, you know, I am 
considered very young, um, and I may not have as much experience as you know other women, um, I can definitely speak to being able to build a career that I love, right? Um, coming from a Hispanic family, growing up in the South Bronx, if you know anything about those two dynamics, you know that oftentimes your life isn't your own, right? You're raised to be a wife, to be a mother, to be a caretaker, to be the center of your family, but never really the center of, of your own life. Right, so very early on I had to learn to advocate for myself and for the things that I wanted and be able to empower other women to do the same thing. So when I think about you know, my life experiences, I always think about my grandmother. And funny enough, I was talking to her this morning and she is complaining about my grandfather, how he like leaves clothes and everywhere, how she doesn't understand why he can't take you know, what the things that he left on the floor and just put them into the hamper or why he like insists on leaving his socks on the nightstand and how they get on there. And I asked her and I'm like, Grandma, like, has he always been like this? And she's like, yeah, for 53 years that I've been married to him, he's always done the same thing. And I'm like, so why are you still complaining 53 years later? I, I, I mean, that's weird, right? And she's like, well, if I had a choice, I would have left. And I'm like, well, why didn't you? She said, because I didn't go to high school and I had four children, so I didn't have a choice, right? And that stuck with me because I have a choice, right? I, I'm blessed that I graduated from Syracuse University. I have a job that I love. You know, I make good, good money for who we consider it to be in New York City. Um, so I don't have to be my grandmother, right? I don't have to stay um, in an unhealthy relationship. I don't have to uh, take a job just to make ends meet. I can really choose the path that I want to be on, right? And when we empower ourselves to take the lead and when we empower other women to take the lead, we're able to have more motivated women, more confident women, and women who are going to be able to not only control their own lives, but empower the lives of the women around them. And that's really what's gonna make a better society, that's really what's gonna make a better economy, and that's really what's gonna propel us all forward. So that's why I'm really passionate about motivating women, the earlier the better. You know, I'm, I'm so glad that she's here today because hopefully, you know, you'll take something away from this um, for the better. So I'm definitely very, very excited to be here, very grateful to be able to share in this mission, and I can't wait to see what happens in 2025. All right, yes. So I want to just quickly introduce Dr. Nancy O'Reilly, who is making it possible for us to do another Train the Trainer, which we think we will be doing early next year. And um, I just want to say thank you, Nancy, and, and, and appreciate that this is going to happen because, I, I mean, I really seriously want to thank you publicly for, for writing the check, essentially, that is going to enable us to continue doing Train the Trainer next year. And, and, and I just have to make one more exciting announcement before I let you go. Um, I want to say thank you to each of you who has contributed to take the lead because it will enable us to continue the kinds of work that we've been talking about tonight. I want to call your attention to this booklet that tells you more about Take the Lead. Uh, please find us on any social media you can think of. Um, give us a call, give us a yell. We need your volunteer time, we need your uh, support in all kinds of different ways. We have envelopes for you. If you would like to put a check in it tonight, we will be eternally grateful. And with that, I would just like to say thank you all again. And thank you, Patty. Did you go hide somewhere? Thank you, Patty, for opening your home to us. We are so appreciative. And are we going to get to parity by 2025? Yes. Yes. All right. Let's go for it.